The Fire of Transformation, taken from Compulsory Dancing, by Darfrey John, Akka Adidas Samraj. Devotees who enter this church are literally entering a fire, the fire of the presence of God. If they are just mediocre, immature people, unprepared for esoteric practice, they can sit with me in the meditation hall and engage nominal practice of the esoteric disciplines, and they will have some experience or understanding as a result. But that understanding will not have the same profound quality as the understanding of the genuine adept, because the immature individual cannot tolerate the fieriness. He or she will waste it and dissociate from it, particularly in an emotional way. If you tend to dissociate emotionally from the spiritual power, from the life presence of the spiritual master, from the divine presence, then you also prevent the spiritual process from manifesting in your own life. As long as you have emotional problems and are fitted to the conventional mind, you cannot realise any more of the spiritual process than the ups and downs of feeling disturbed and feeling consoled. You must come to the point in your practice where the presence of the spiritual master, the living presence of God, is completely obvious to you, even bodily, moment to moment, so that you can actually feel is working in the body-mind. Likewise, you must have a capacity for surrender to that force so that it can continue to purify the body-mind at every level. Whenever it meets some obstruction, some tightness, some stress, some tension, some mental obsession, it will just work on that obstruction for years and years and years and years creating a difficult life for you. As soon as the obstruction dissolves, suddenly that area of the body-mind feels full. Therefore, you are smart to become a devotee first. Then the process need not be made difficult by virtue of your own resistance. Much of what is difficult about the process is simply your resistance. The fixations of mind the emotional reactivity, the conventional street mentality and the physical habits that create toxic, elevated, negative bodily states. The higher and spiritual physics of the evolutionary process in which we are evolved, involved, is the conversion of the body into energy and the conversion of energy into consciousness. Most people who approach me generally are only considering the idea of the transformation of the body into energy, and such consideration does not develop to a high degree except in rare cases. To go beyond the mere development of energy in the nervous system, therefore, to the realisation of the transcendental reality, true consciousness, the infinitely radiant being, is an extremely rare event, for obvious reasons. The mechanical life that people develop through action-reaction in the realm of nature creates obstructions that do not easily disappear. You see how difficult it is for you to move beyond the most rudimentary psychological and emotional problems. What must you do in order to be translated into absolute energy in consciousness? Bodily translation into light requires a great leap, an extreme of practice, and you must be fit for it. You must let many things go. You must let everything go finally, and allow that letting go to be, to be the end of it. But you keep returning to your problems. Your commitments last a few hours and then you forget all about them. You cannot fulfil the process while your loveless tendencies are still possessing you. Thus, 
you must practice with the will from the heart. The heart is the key to the practice of real or spiritual life. People tend to focus on the dimensions of the mind or the body and to lose the focus of the heart. Nevertheless, the principle of spirituality is at the heart and the fire of the spiritual process is awakened there. That fire is not situated at the perineum, perineum, nor is it up at the crown. It is at the heart, at the place of infinity, the root of the being, the feeling core of the body-mind. Therefore, if you are constantly struggling with emotional problems, the spiritual process cannot be effective in your case. Only a rudimentary religious association is possible in a life that is characterised principally by emotional phasing. Transcending the phases of emotional dissociation is a requisite for entering into the truly esoteric or higher development of this way. Thus, it was not, sorry, thus, it was that traditionally the esoteric initiation was available only to those who had passed through a period of apprenticeship. The adepts did not go downtown and initiate ordinary people into the Kundalini process or reveal esoteric techniques for exercising the higher aspects of the nervous system in meditation. Spiritual initiation is not meant for people with emotional problems and therefore it should not be given to such people. Such people need not be turned away, but they must be integrated with the culture of truth. They must take up the way of life in its fullest terms at every level for which they personally can be responsible. When they represent a psychophysical mechanism that can hold the divine light and force, then the esoteric process of the higher stages of life will begin for them. Surrender is the mechanism of transformation, heartfelt surrender to God, and the great mechanism in nature that quickens the surrender of human beings is a human individual who can act as spiritual master, an individual who is transparent to the life of God and who can enter into relations with devotees. The life presence that is the spiritual master and the divine is granted to the devotee through his or her relationship to the living spiritual master. The gift of grace is monitored constantly by the quality of heartfelt practice or heartfelt surrender. If you spend your life using the spiritual master for conventional purposes, wasting your life in the divine force he brings to you with endless vulgar emotional problems, then that conflict is also all you will realise. Your practice does not become the great spiritual process of the, if you associate casually with the spiritual master. The spiritual traditions are filled with endless stories of people who were intimate with enlightened men, even the intimate personal servants of enlightened men, yet who gained nothing because they were not rightly related to the master. In spite of their proximity, they approach the master through conventional forms of relationship, while, by contrast, people who had practically no outward intimacy with the spiritual master frequently became the greatest examples of the devotee in his company. If you do not see the spiritual master, if you are not, through heartfelt sympathy with him, awakened to his true condition, you cannot practice rightly in his company. You must realise that the spiritual master is a spirit presence, not merely a collection of flesh and bone. If this truth is not clear to you, when you cannot practice, then you cannot practice rightly. You waste your life failing to fulfil the law of devotion. If you have not heard the teaching, if the truth is not awakened in your own insight and understanding, you cannot see the spiritual master. You must see the spiritual master and you must hear his argument. 
You must appreciate what the spiritual master is so that you can surrender to him in truth.